what's up? I am super excited to be here and to be hanging out with you guys. And I just want to say props to the people that are showing up and watching me go live and continuing to watch trainings on a regular basis to better your business. That is a huge step towards success is showing up for your business. So I am so proud of you, first of all, for even taking the time out of your day to come and hang out with me. So as you're hopping on, or if you're watching the replay, say hi so that I know you are here. I love to see everybody that hops on and comes and hangs out with me. So it's storming where I live. Surprise, right? I feel like it's storming all over lately. Like. I looked at the radar earlier and it was all across the United States. So it's probably storming where you are too. So if you hear thunder, it's not my kids tearing down the house. It's outside. <laughs> I tried to come somewhere where it was the most quiet in my house. Um, but then the weather's not cooperating right. So anyways, if, that, if you hear banging, it's thunder. Um, so yesterday I went on the... Hi guys. I went on the what did you share group for directors and above and I asked them what they wanted to hear me train on and I used that to pick my topic for today. So first of all, I'm Stacy Berenger, obviously. I'm a superstar director and I live right outside of St. Louis. I've been a consultant for over 12 years now and since he is my full-time job and has been for a really long time um a really long time i think i don't even know for sure but like 11 or 10 or 11 years actually longer so over 11 years i've only been doing since um i have zero option to make sensi work so i i refuse to not do Scentsy full time. I refuse to let my business die or take a downward nose dive. Like that's not an option for me. I have the mindset of this is going to work. I am going to be successful and I'm gonna do what it takes to be successful. I think mindset is super important, but you're here. So you want your business to work. You're willing to do the things that will help you rise and help you grow and learn because you're here watching this training video. I always tell my group that whenever I feel a little bit of burnout or I'm feeling unmotivated or like I don't want to do anything in my business, one thing that picks me up and gets a fire relit and makes me want to get out there and work my business is watching other people that are motivated and that are successful and that are doing things in their business that work. We will not always be in the mood to work our business. We will not always be motivated. We, that's just not a thing. And that's why people quit is because that motivation feeling goes away. It's for everything in life. The newness wears off. I mean, I almost quit selling Scentsy not long after I started because the, the newness and the excitement wore off and I didn't have things in place to pick myself back up because no one's coming to save you. No one's coming to make you work your business. Like if you want to quit, I mean, you either have to pick it up and do something about that that crappy feeling or quit, right? Like we're, we're all grown ups and we it's our own responsibility to find that fire and get excited all over again. So watching training videos just gets me excited and I love learning from other people because there's so many different ways that you can work your business in different ways that you can do things to be successful. And we have the best community of people that share that. Like, free training at your fingertips anytime that you want them. If you don't follow other people on YouTube, other consultants, other leaders that have already like paved the way to success, you should. There are some amazing humans that sell Scentsy that share their content on YouTube for free and they know what they're doing. They're at the top of the compensation plan. They're earning incentive trips. Like go to YouTube, right? Share that with your team also. Like share that there are just so many resources over on YouTube. I do have a YouTube channel. So if you want to know more about anything that I'm sharing today, I probably have a training over on my YouTube channel. I shared my Instagram link 
feel free to follow me on Instagram. I cannot really accept any more friend requests because I'm almost at the limit of the 5,000. So follow me on Instagram. I share a ton of things over there. I'm in my stories all the time and I'm doing the things that I'm gonna talk to you about today over on Instagram, Facebook too, but you can follow me on Instagram. Okay, so the top two things that, well, there was, there was more than two, but the top two things that I'm gonna talk about today that people commented that wanted to hear me talk about was attraction marketing and follow-up. And I feel like I'm pretty good at these two things. So this conversation is gonna come easy, okay? So how do we reel in and catch keepers, right? Like I think about it like fishing. Um, we need to find new customers. We want new customers because we have this bucket of customers, right? And at first your bucket's empty and then you start filling it up, right? You start putting customers in there, but there's a hole in your bucket because people will always disappear. They will stop using Sensi or find a new consultant because they're somebody in their family joined or maybe they've joined your team and they're no longer your customer. So your bucket will always have a slow leak. So we have to be putting people into our bucket all the time or your business is going to stop growing and eventually drain out of your bucket, right? We don't want that. We have to be able to put customers in our bucket and we wanna do it in the most natural, easy way. We don't want to have to stress so hard about finding new customers because when it looks unnatural or when you're cold messaging people, trying to make them be your customer, it feels icky for you and it feels icky for them and that's just not a good way to find customers. So how are you going to find customers in a very natural way to where they are almost coming to you. Cause that's, I mean, that's the ultimate goal, right? Like how amazing would that be if you could just have people coming to you to buy Sensi, and you can, but you have to be doing things with intent and consistently to make that happen. So 98% of my business is, is on social media. I, I'm going to be completely honest and vulnerable, like talking to people in real life, especially new people is really hard for me. It's cringy to me and I hate it, but I will do it because I will do anything to help my business grow. But I would much rather work my business on social media. It's more comfortable to me and it's easier and it fits into my lifestyle so much easier. I have five kids and I'm not kidding you when I say my evenings from the time I pick them up from school until bedtime is non-stop go and I'm in my car all the time. So working my business from social media is like, that's the way I get down. That is my jam and it works for me and this is what I do. So I use Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest. I'm not, I, I do uh, TikTok a little bit, but I'm not like TikTok is a shark tank to me. I love to watch TikToks, but it's a shark tank. And if your TikTok gets in the wrong algorithm, there's people out there that will eat you alive and it scares me. I'm just being honest. <laughs> so I don't use TikTok that much to grow my business. Instagram, Pinterest, Facebook are like my main three. Okay. So for Facebook, if you look at my Facebook timeline, which a lot of it's private now. I used to keep it public, but because I don't use my personal timeline as much for my Scentsy business, I've made it private. I, I make it more of a relatable timeline of my life, kind of like a blog post. I just show people who I am on there. So my, my customers are mostly on my Facebook. My friends, my family, people I meet in real life, I add them to my Facebook. I let them follow me and get to know me through seeing my post. You know that if you follow somebody on Facebook and they're sharing their life, you feel like you know them. You feel like you know their kids. You feel like you know their husband. And when you see them out in public, it's almost kind of weird because you feel like you're best friends, but you've never even met, right? Like that's my goal on Facebook. I want everyone that is on my timeline to feel like they know me. So that is where I share who I am, what I'm doing, what my kids are doing. And then I sprinkle in a little bit of Scentsy here and there because Scentsy is intertwined in every aspect of my life. So it's not hard for me to share that naturally without looking salesy on my personal timeline. If I meet somebody at my kid's school 
or at a sporting event or through my church or wherever it is, I add them on social media, Facebook first. That's the first thing I do. Facebook is probably like the platform that is most comfortable to me because I've been doing it for so long, right? So I add them to my Facebook and I let them get to know me better through Facebook. I comment on their pictures. One of my things that I do every day, and I got this idea from Chastity Robinson, who is amazing. She's another superstar director that has a bomb YouTube channel. You should go follow her. But she, in her systems that she does every day for working her businesses, she connects to five people every single day. So I added that to my list. Five people every day, I comment on their pictures. I talk to them about what they're posting. Sometimes I'll send them a message about something that they're going through in life, and it has nothing to do with Sensi. It is people that buy Scentsy from me or that I know in real life um, that I'm building a relationship with, okay? So I use my personal timeline personally. I don't post a ton of Scentsy. Now you can totally do this any way that you want. I'm just gonna tell you how I do it and what is working for me. Okay, so then I use my Instagram. Wait, let me back up. So also on Facebook, I have a VIP group. My VIP group is my bread and butter. It is my circle of uh, customers that buy from me. There are not people in my VIP group that I have dumped in there hoping they buy from me. They are not people that are other consultants. If you look at my VIP group, I don't let other consultants in there. It is a group of people that buy Scentsy from me and support my business. This is where I post every day, just about, um, what is coming out with Scentsy, what I'm warming. I post about samples in there. I post about my happy mail. This is where I post things about Scentsy because these people have joined my VIP group willingly because I send a text when they order from me and I give them my VIP link and they join my VIP group if they want to. This is where I throw Scentsy at people all the time. Okay, so yesterday I shared a rainbow six pack it was something somebody else shared and I think I sold three of them, okay? So I posted that in my VIP group and people commented that they wanted them. So then I ordered them for them. This is where I post about my own mystery bags and all of the things that I do inside my business in my VIP group. I am consistently posting in there, okay? Then let's go over to Instagram. So Instagram is where I attraction market okay so this is where I try to find new people that are my people okay so you guys know about the algorithm right the algorithm helps people that it thinks will want to see your content find your content so if you are on these social media platforms and you are holding back who you are what you like to do, your favorite colors, your hobbies, the things that make you happy, the algorithm cannot do its job. It is really good at its job, but if you are standing in the way of it doing its job, your people are never gonna find you. New customers that are gonna click with your personality and love to grow a friendship are not going to be able to find you. I know that being a little transparent and vulnerable with who you are can be scary, but there are people out there that would love to be your friend and love to buy Scentsy from you because of who you are. But if you're not sharing that stuff and letting people in on a little bit of your life, they're not gonna be able to find you. You have to be okay with showing who you are on social media if you want to use social media to grow your business. If it doesn't feel comfortable to you, if you don't want to run your business on social media or you have to be private for some reason, which is definitely something that, you know, some people have that situation, I completely understand. Attraction marketing on social media isn't for you. And that's okay. There's, a, there's plenty of other ways to work your business. But if you are wanting to find new customers on social media, you have to show the people that are watching you who you are. Melissa Gratz said something on a training one time and it has forever stayed with me. When you are on social media, you are in a theater on stage and the room is dark and you cannot see who is in the audience. You don't know who's watching you. 
And you have to think about that every time you make a post on social media. There are people out there that are watching you that you have no idea. And they might wanna join your team. They might be considering Cincy as a career. They might be considering buying Cincy products. They're watching you because they like you. They, people like to watch other humans live real lives, unfiltered, unedited, real lives. So I use my stories to let people connect with me and to see inside of my life. I don't share private information, obviously. I don't want weirdos knocking on my door. I don't share my address or anything crazy like that, but I share myself using my Scentsy products. I share um, how Scentsy has blessed my life and I do it in ways that it's not like, hey, Scentsy's done this, which today I did because I do that sometimes. But sometimes the other day I was, I had a rough day. I felt like everything was just like happening to me. Um, just a couple of crappy things happened to me one day. And I was like, you know what? I'm done. I'm done with today. I'm going to go sit in the freaking grass out by the tree with my son while he digs for bugs with his new bug kit that I bought him. And I shared that on my stories because since he gives me the opportunity to do that, I don't have to stay at a job for four more hours, even though I'm having a bad day and I just want to be outside in the fresh air with my kid. Like, since he gives me that opportunity, but if I don't share that, and if I wasn't vulnerable enough to put that out there, like, I'm having a bad day, this is what happened to me, this guy flipped me off, and I have no idea why, and it hurt my feelings, like, if I wasn't okay with sharing that information, nobody would know how since he blessed my life. That, that maybe resonated with somebody that's watching me in my audience, and I have no clue who's watching me. They are getting to know me without me even knowing it and multiple people. You post one time and get hundreds of views when you build your network up and your platforms up. You do the job one time, hey Amber, you do the job one time, one post reaches that many people. It's like work smarter, not harder. If you can get more information out there with one post or one story, why would you not be taking advantage of that? And it doesn't, your, your platform's not gonna grow overnight. So don't go into this with these tips thinking that things are gonna change by next week and you're gonna be getting hundreds of customers for just coming in because that's not how it works. You have to prove yourself to the people watching you. How many people are out there that you see on social media that are selling something and then you know two months down the road they're with another company and you're like, wait a second, I thought that was the best thing in the world, but now you're talking about this. Like, so you have to prove yourself and that takes time and that takes consistency. So don't think it's gonna happen overnight, but also don't think what you're doing is not making a difference because it is. Success isn't necessarily built by doing great, amazing, huge things every now and then. It is built in the little tiny things you do every single day. That's what makes a difference. I could get on my social media platforms today and post 50 things and all I'm gonna do is annoy everybody because I'm over posting and then not post anything for the next two weeks and people done forgot. They done forgot that since he's changed my life and that I'm warming like the best new summer bricks and all of the things that I'm sharing. You have to be able to post every day. And guys, you don't, like I've been talking about this lately, like you don't have to spend hours and hours and hours working your business every day to be successful. If you give your business 15 minutes a day consistently every single day, you will see improvement. If you spend 15 minutes being intentful on social media, and that's a difference, scrolling does not equal growth in your business. If you get on social media and you're being intentful for 15 minutes a day on building your network and attracting new customers to you, you will see improvement. And it might not be next week and it might not be next month, but by next year, you're going to be like, dang, that paid off for me. You have to do something to remind yourself every day to sit your butt down and focus on your business because like I said, nobody's coming to save you. Nobody's coming to work your business for you. No one's gonna earn those incentive trips for you and no one's going to grow this big successful business for you. You have to do it. And you're a big girl, you're a big boy, we can do this. It's easy, it's so easy. We don't have to go clock in eight hours to make a paycheck for our Cincy business. We just have to be consistent with it. And social media just gives us this perfect place to reach millions of people. You just have to do it. You just have to be willing to commit 
and then follow through. So another thing that I do to find new customers outside of Instagram is um, I join groups on Facebook and I talk to people in those groups because that's much easier for me than to go talk to people in real life, okay? Just keeping it real. So I join groups, like I have Yorkies, so I'm in Yorkie groups. I have a GSP, I join GSP groups. Um, I have twins, I'm in twin groups. I love Disney, I'm in Disney groups. Okay, so I join these groups and I start having conversations and I start getting to know people and I do not talk about Cincy. I do not make it salesy. I don't say, hey girl, I'm trying to meet this goal. I don't do any of that. I build a relationship with people and get them on my social media. I have a director, a frontline director that joined my team because of a twin, or not my team, joined or added me on Facebook because of a twin mom group, okay? She added me as a friend or I added her one or the other and I never once talked to her about Cincy. I was never in her DMs being a creep, like, hey girl, help me meet this goal. Like, that's gross. I don't do that. I it's If somebody does that to me, immediate unfollow, immediate unfriend, if I don't know them. Like, if I've never had a conversation with somebody and they come at me like, hey, you should buy something from me, that's, that's not my thing, that's not what I'm about. But if I built a relationship with them, and if you do it right, they're going to come to you and they're gonna see that you're using Scentsy. Hey, Mariah. And they're gonna see that you're changing your wax and you're spraying your bed and that Scentsy has allowed you to say yes to your kids to go take them to do something fun because you just got paid. So this lady that joined my team because of a twin mom group, this is just one example, ended up buying Scentsy from me. Just went on my website and bought Scentsy from me from seeing me post in my story so much about it. And then I sent her happy mail and we're going to talk about follow up here in a second. But then I continued the relationship after she bought from me once and then she bought from me twice and then she bought from me three times. And then I'm like, hey, girl, you need to join my team. You need your own discount. You love Cincy. You are doing the dang thing anyway, posting about how much you love it. You need to join and she did, and she's a director now, and she I love her so much. She is such an amazing person. I have met her in real life once, and that was at SFR. She's a rockin' director, but she never would have found me if it wasn't for me starting a conversation in a twin mom group. Like, you can use these groups and not be salesy and not be cringy, but meet people, get them on your platforms, and let them watch you be consistent in the background. Okay, I say like the front of your social media is your timeline and what you post, but your stories are like the background. It's like the real life stuff that you're doing day to day that doesn't deserve a full post, right? It's you changing your wax or whatever it is and they are going to consistently see this. This is what reels them in. They're like, wait a second, her house smells good. Her warmers are super cute or you know, she's getting an extra paycheck every month. This background stuff is reeling people in and you don't even know it. But if you're not consistent, it's not going to work. You have to consistently reel them in over and over and over and over. Okay, so let me look over my notes and make sure I got everything that I want to talk to about attraction marketing. And you guys can ask me questions and I'll try to read comments. Okay, so let's talk about follow-up. I feel like follow-up oh, can be so over, over complicated. And for a long time, I overcomplicated it for myself. And I've changed that. Because if something is super complicated and hard, I won't do it. I'll find a reason to not do it. So something is better than nothing. You can watch training videos all day long on how to follow up with customers, but if you are not talking to your customers and following up with them, it doesn't help you a single bit. So first of all, stop making follow-up so complicated. This is when things changed for me. When I stopped trying to find something to replace the AMI app, Amy, AMI, I don't know, and just started talking to people again, it fixed it. It fixed the problem. So I don't have a structured, systematic way that I follow up, but I have multiple routes that I follow up and hit customers with. And I keep it very much casual, 
conversational and just like reminding them that I that I exist, right? Because we don't nat- if we're doing our job right, we don't have to say, "Hey, do you need Cincy?" Every single time we talk to somebody, we can say, "Hey, I'm putting an order in." But we could also say, "Hey, how are you? I saw your daughter was sick. I just wanted to check in and see if she's feeling any better." That is following up. That is doing more for your relationship with your customer than saying, hey, I have an order going in, do you need anything? Because if you're doing your job right, immediately they're gonna think, Stacy, Cincy, Cincy, Stacy. It's gonna go hand in hand. I don't have to say, do you need wax? For them to think, do I need wax? You can literally just be a nice person or a good friend and check on them, see what they're up to. Um, be genuine when you're talking to them. So my VIP girl, VIP group on Facebook is literally constant follow-up because I'm reminding them as I post and they're seeing it in my VIP group that I sell Cincy, okay? So all those people in my VIP group are seeing, most of them are seeing my post. Every now and then I'll do where you can tag everybody in your group. Uh, I don't do that every day because I don't want to annoy people. But if I have something big going on, like I do monthly my own like whiff boxes. I call them scented subscriptions. They're like mystery boxes every month and I'm not going to talk about those today, but I do have I do talk about them on some of my trainings on YouTube. Um if once a month I do those and I will do the at everyone so everyone gets tagged. So that's a constant follow up. When you're posting in your VIP group regularly, you are following up with people. You're jogging their memory that you sell Scentsy and that they might need wax or they might need a new warmer or they might need a gift for a bridal shower. Whatever it is, that is constant follow-up. When you are in your stories, that is follow-up. You don't even realize you're following up with 20 people at once because you're posting once and 20 people are seeing it about what you're doing. That's follow-up. Your, I send thank you text messages every time somebody orders. Every time somebody orders from me, I send them a thank you text message. I want them to know that they are seen and they are appreciated. And I change that text message. It is not a copy and paste. I'm like, thank you so much for your order. You bless my family. Um, I can't wait for you to get your Mother's Day collection or whatever it is. I make that personal. That is huge. Do you know how many times I've ordered from another direct selling company from another consultant and got a text message that says thank you because it's zero, literally zero. And I try to order from other people in direct selling because I know it's a real person and I know it changes lives. I wanna help other people. I've never gotten a text message from somebody telling me thank you. It's literally free and it's an easy way to set yourself apart and let those people that are ordering from you know that you are a real person and they really just blessed your life with that order, right? So use that email and leave it in your inbox as a reminder to text them and tell them thank you. Don't delete the email that says you got an online order until you send a thank you text message, okay? That's follow up, guys. It doesn't have to be so hard. It doesn't have to be complicated. You don't have to stress yourself out trying to have a system for who to follow up with when. If you do these things, you're going to make contact with almost everybody that has ordered from you. I also send out emails. Um, If we're having a flash sale, I get on and I use my contacts report in the workstation and I sort it by last order and I do the last 500 people. I email them that we're having a flash sale or that the flash sale has started. That is so easy. It doesn't take but five minutes to email the last 500 people that ordered from you, 500. And you could do more or less, but I do 500 because that's a lot of freaking people. You can email at one time and tell them that there's a flash sale or that that what the LTOs are for the next week or whatever it is. You can email them all at once. That's 500 people you are following up with at one time. You can, this is why you can work your business for 15 minutes a day and see a big change. These are all things that you could sit down once a week, you know, in different ways, put them in your planner and do these things on a consistent basis and you will see growth in your business, especially if you're not already doing them. Now, I also use uh, 
MailChimp. I couldn't think of the name. MailChimp. Um, and my friend Brianna taught me this. You can use MailChimp to do an email. You can like pull the templates over, add pictures, add all of the things, click preview mode, literally copy and paste that into the workstation email and send the email from your workstation to the last 500 people. If that stresses you out thinking about it or overwhelms you, pretend I didn't say it. But if you're understanding what I'm putting down, then guys, it's super easy to make it even more eye-catching. But something's better than nothing. So if you are literally typing an email about what's coming out next month, that is better than doing nothing. You have to do something in your business to get results. The energy you put into your business is what you will get out of your business. If you are putting in this much energy, you're going to get this much of a paycheck. I'm just keeping it real. It doesn't happen by itself. And if it does, it's not a strong foundation and it's gonna crumble. You have to build a strong foundation in your business and be doing the things on a consistent basis if you want results out of your business. When I first started selling Cincy, I joined and there was excitement and my circle of family and friends was buying from me and excited about my business and I was selling, uh, I sold $4,000 my second month that I was a consultant, 1000 the first month. I was, I was killing it, right? But my excitement wore off because my friends and family bought Cincy from me already and they didn't need Cincy again. And I was like, it's not working for me anymore. Like I, nobody's buying from me. Well, yeah, because I wasn't doing anything to, to meet new people or to expand my circle. Like you can only get so many orders from your immediate friends and family. Like we have to branch out. We have to fill our buckets more, 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 more customers. And we have to find the ways that we can work smarter, not harder. And to reach the most amount of people for the least amount of work, right? We all have lives. We all have kids or jobs or whatever else we gotta do in our daily life. We need to work our business cons like intently, consistently in a short amount of time every single day. Because if it's hard and if it's taking up too much of your time and it's causing stress in other parts of your life, you're gonna quit doing it. Find ways that work for you and your life in the season of life that you're in. Right now, I am in a season of my life that I can't even hardly go to events and, I, and I'm, it's sad for me. I can't go to SFR this year because my kids have a super important basketball tournament and my son shoots trap league and it's the biggest, uh, whatever they're called, meet of the year. I'm in a season of my life where I can't do events, but I'm going to make up for that in other ways in my business, okay? Like I refuse. Like I said, I refuse to let my business crumble fall, fade, it will work for me. And that's the mindset it takes to be successful. I want you, this is my challenge for you. I want you to take notes of things that I said today or things that you know that work in your business, write them down on a piece of paper, put them in your planner every single week. I didn't bring my planner up here, but you can do, do the same things. Print address labels like Chastity does, and I do too, you can, um, I'll post a picture in the comments. Every week I do the same things every single day. Like Mondays I do the same things. Tuesday I do the same things. And they don't take me any amount of time. But I will be consistent. I will continue to do the things that work for my business. And that's what you have to do if you want to see progress and growth and an increase on your paycheck. You have to do the things that change your business. Cut out the fluff, do the important things, grow your network on social media or in person, and you will see results. It's really not that hard. We have the best job in the whole entire world. Don't forget that. We have the best job in the whole world. I mean, what other job lets you stay at home and drink coffee and homeschool your kids and tote them around all evening and work when you want to, right? Like, lets you earn incentive trips just for doing your job. Guys, we are literally... So blessed to have Cincy. Don't let your business slip away because you didn't do the little things that could only take 15 minutes. You can do it. I love you all. Go follow me on Instagram if you wanna stay connected and I'm super proud of you for showing up for your business today.